My name is Danielle Procopio, and I'm your host for today's episode of Active Aging. Today, we have friends rejoining us from a few years ago, uh, the team at Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, we've got Steve and Andrea here. They're going to talk to us a little bit about what's been going on in the real estate community uh, since COVID. I know that there have been a lot of changes. We've heard a lot of things anecdotally, and we're bringing in the experts to tell us exactly what's happening in the housing market and how it's going to affect us as buyers or as sellers. So to start out, guys, talk us through how COVID-19 affected the housing market. Market. What happened? Well, I, I tell you, Dan Danielle, it was um, kind of like everybody was on, on a freeze for only about a few weeks in our area. But but there was such a pent up demand of buyers on the market that people just felt the rush to get into their homes, and so we really never saw a pause in our market just because of that fact. And boy, I mean, COVID definitely changed a lot about how we do business, but uh, it, it, it has not slowed down a bit. What do you say, Steve? Yeah, I, so we changed the way that agents showed houses, how people came into the office, just like every other company. But as Andrea said, you know, our counterparts in, parts in Pennsylvania, they shut down completely. Oh, wow. Months. They were not allowed to show houses, come to the office. And of course, Governor DeWine said that we, real estate was essential. So we kept going, except for some hiccups in the road about, you know, some sellers didn't want to show houses or have strangers in their house. Understandable. But we actually had um, and had a better 2020 than we did in 2019 with with sales and production and, and things like that. So really unbelievable if you'd have thought the way it started out. Uh, the way it ended in 2020. So, um, and even in, and even now continuing with home prices and multiple buyers, like Andrea said, it's just like, there are so many more buyers per every listing out there that it's, it's I, I hate to use the word crazy, but it's just unbelievable of, the, of what people are offering for houses now and how many offers on every new listing that comes on the market. So some of these listings right now are, they're gone within 24 hours. Oh, wow. As soon as they hit the market. Yeah. And there are multiple offers and they're over asking price. So uh, because there's so many buyers that missed out on a lot of deals mm -hmm. before that they're just, they're throwing money at these, at these sellers now, just trying to get them to say yes. You know, so you then know, we have to yeah. Sorry, Go Steve. That's right. It's interesting to see the dynamics of how the market did change a little bit. And one is that you know, cash is king in the market right now. Um, and it's like, where are all these cash buyers coming from? Well, you know what? It comes from our greatest generation. You know, they have a home that, that they sold. They have, have uh, money in their savings account. So they're able to get their house sold, pay cash for another house. And it's seamless. And they're beating out all these first time home buyers just because sellers are afraid like that the property is going to appraise or not for that purchase price. Right. So there is, um, boy, there's, there's a lot of coaching and, um, and, and just guidance that we have to give the public right now on, hey, listen, even if somebody's willing to pay $250,000 for your house, if the appraiser says it's only worth uh, 200, then, yeah. you know, we're, we're looking at a $50,000 deficit and, and the bank's not going to, lend more on a house um you know so you you got to come up with the difference yeah it's crazy and i know that um you know covid definitely affected all of our supply chains my husband works in the lumber industry and you know they really had a hard time getting their hands on lumber and i think one of the things that was really interesting is friends that i had building houses going into covid you know, some of them are still waiting for those houses to be built. Um, you know, we were working on an addition in, in the house right as COVID started, and we had a hole in the side of the house the day Governor DeWine shut everything down. And so I think that even, you know, with new construction, there's been so many unexpected interruptions, so many, you know, prices that are now changing because of the, you know, the, the difficulty in getting supplies. Um, and I know a lot of people that, had originally spoke about maybe building a condo or a villa or, you know, looking to build something opted out and decided to buy 
already built a because you're probably getting better for your dollar at the end of the day with the way supplies are and two you have no control over that timeline when it's a when it's a supply issue so did you guys have any buyers that were coming in that maybe were having difficulty with the house building process or thought about building and changed their their tune once they saw what was going on yes we had actually several uh, homes that were under construction. And what happened is, you know, the, the freeze in the lumber and, and everything. And, and, you know, a lot of times, you know, we have to, you know, if, if a builder is building a house and he's anticipating the cost of materials at a certain price, and then all of a sudden they double in price, mm -hmm. uh, boy, it hits the bottom line because he's already got a contract. Uh, with those people. And a lot of these builders, they don't have a place to store all that lumber, all those supplies, you know, they get it as they need it for each project and have it delivered. And it really made a big difference. So we've had to definitely work with our builders and with our uh, buyers that are buying those new construction builds uh, to help work things out so that uh, so the builder could keep building. Right. Well, there's, and there's, as you said, Daniel, there's been some builders that just had to cancel the build mm -hmm. because they couldn't get supplies or or it doubled, you know. So uh, and that and that trickled down to even to the regular home sales because you take some of those people that were looking, they couldn't find a home, so they said, "Well, we'll build." Well, then prices went up and they couldn't build. Yeah. So if they had equity, they decided, you know what? If I love my neighborhood and I love my neighbors and I love my house, but I wanted a new kitchen or I wanted a family room or, or, a, or a four seasons room. They went out and got money refinanced mm -hmm. and just re rehab their own home. Yeah. So that hurt our listings because now that home never came on the market. Right. Right. So if someone else out there, a buyer out there did, lost a chance to purchase that home because they decided just to stay where they were and upgrade where they were living because they couldn't, number one, they couldn't find a new home or they couldn't build a new home. So they just stayed where they were at. Yeah. It's a, it's a weird time in general with COVID, but it's been, it's been very uh, interesting to watch the real estate market and see how COVID's really impacted things. You know, there've been several um, clients of ours and several friends of mine who had no intention of moving or selling their home. And because they saw what was happening in the real estate market, they decided it was time to sell. So are you guys seeing a lot of that people that are kind of just taking advantage of what's oh. happening to, to you know, make a little bit extra money than what they might have if they waited or if they had sold sooner? Right, I have yeah. a past client of mine, sorry, Andrew, past client of mine even called me and said, he just bought the house three years ago. He said, should I sell it? And I go, well, if you wanna make more money at a lower interest rates, because the rates at that point were in the low twos, mid, mid two percents. But I also told him what you buy new, you're going to pay more for than you normally would. So you need to make sure that you, like I said before, do you want to leave your neighborhood? Do you want to leave your neighbors? Because you'll make a little bit more money, but you're going to pay more money on your new house too. So right. yeah, I, I think we see a lot of that, at least conversations about that. Definitely. Yes. I know that I've, I've had that conversation a couple times where I'm like, sure, you can sell, but then where are you going to go? Yes, absolutely. And, um, you know, with our clients, it's a, it's a different story. A lot of our clients are downsizing and you guys have been a great partner in that process. And so um, people who've been thinking about downsizing and looking at living in a senior community, it's a real easy, it's a real easy answer for them because they have somewhere to go where they're not going to have any maintenance. They don't have to worry about the build. You know, there's already a place that's waiting for them. Um, but, you know, we've had quite a few clients that have taken advantage and have been able to sell their home right now and, and then make that transition um, easily with a little more money in their pocket than I think they had originally anticipated to get. So it's right. been good. Yeah. Yeah. So if I'm yeah. thinking about uh, putting my house on the market right now, what, what are some tips and suggestions from you guys that we can, we can use? I would say that the, the best thing somebody could do right now is if they're just starting to think about it, get a professional real estate agent out to your house prior to. There might be a lot of little things that you could do to increase the saleability of your home because even though it's a hot market out there, there buyers still are not going to buy something if it has too much that's wrong with it 
or if it could fall apart at a home inspection. We want to make sure that when we get under contract with a deal that it goes through to the end. And one of the things that we have found, at least in, in the Mahoning County market, is that homes that are staged by a professional stager are selling for a lot more money and a lot faster than homes that are not staged. And it's surprising because wow. a lot of the agents that show our properties will call us and say, who staged that house? I want them to come and, and, and design my house for me, design my living room. Uh, so it does make a really big difference. And, you know, it's, it's minimalizing, you know, as you're getting ready to move out, um, you know, don't leave the stuff that you don't want to take with you behind just to make the house look full. That's not the idea of staging. The idea of staging is to clear everything out, bring something new and fresh inside. Um, we do like fresh plants and different things like that that just really help to spark that because an empty house leaves, it, it just is too hard for buyers to fill that landscape. What size bed's going to fit in here? Oh, my table can't fit in here. Six people can't eat in this space. Well, once you put a table in there, oh yeah, six people can't eat in this space because we just don't have depth perception when we're looking at empty houses. Definitely. And Andrea, let me ask you um, a couple questions about staging. So if our viewers are anything like me during, um, during the pandemic, I've been doing a lot of watching of television shows and, and, you know, participating in binge watching on, of some of these really fantastic real estate shows that you can find on Netflix and other channels. And st they talk about staging all the time. So if I'm looking to sell my home and I know that it needs staged, can my real estate partner and my, their staging partner use what I have in my house? Or do you bring in all new things or like, how does that work? Because I know on TV, when, when they show the before and after, there's all kinds of new stuff. And I always wonder where that comes from. Yes. So they do it several different ways, right? So you could, you could do that. If the house is completely empty, they'll bring stuff completely in. And I personally, I've, I've given uh, the stager that we use a dollar limit. Like, hey, I just want to put this much money into the house uh, for 30 days and we'll get this baby sold. And, and so that works for those vacant houses. What they use, they don't bring like whole beds in, they use blow up mattresses. So if you're ever walking through those houses and you wanna know if the house is staged, just touch the mattress. And if it's a blow up mattress, you know it was staged for you. So um, the other thing is, is yes, if you currently live in your home and you have stuff in there, the stager will come in. They will tell you what stuff to put away, what stuff to pack, what stuff to get rid of. And they'll bring some of their own things in and. And I tell you what, we have had some people say, oh my gosh, maybe I don't want to leave now because <laughs> I love the way that it looks. But uh, most of the time, they, I've had nobody that decided to stay, but uh, it's, uh, it really does work well. And it's worth the investment to do. And uh, the stage that we use with Berkshire Hathaway here uh, locally, uh, she she allows us to pay her at closing. So there's not like right. upfront money that has to be uh, done on the spot. But if the, you know, if the seller wanted to do that, they absolutely could. So that would be completely up to them and the stager. It's a contract with them. Great. I know you probably cringe when I talk about what's on TV, because <laughs> I know that my doctors that we work with here always giggle about how, you know, people look things up on Google and they think they know everything. So I'm sure with the new uh, rush of real estate shows that have been on, you probably have people coming in telling you how to do your job because so-and-so said so on television. So all, it's all a blessing time. and a curse, right? All the, all the time. <laughs> So any other suggestions you would have for um, folks out there that are thinking about selling anything that might help them through this crazy time or that they need to know? Well, just again, with downsizing, I know we're helped with a big, you know, with dealing with that is that um, is, you know, you just need to understand is that when you talk, talk with family, you know, make sure that you're, you're ready to make that move. I've told you before and before about my mom is I asked her like 20 times before she bought her condo. And I've never asked any client of mine 20 times, are they sure, <laughs> right? Because family always cares. I'm just lucky that my two sisters 
let me handle it because of my business in real estate and said, whatever mom wants. And we knew that was her decision. Um, you know, if you love your house, but now maybe all your kids are gone and you're there by yourself or your spouse. And now you've been there 30, 40 years. Well, everything there may be 30, 40 years too old. And this needs fixed and that needs fixed it becomes a money pit. You need a new roof. You can't walk upstairs or downstairs anymore because it's dangerous. You know, so those are things you need to think about if you're if, you, if you're looking to downsize and make a move uh, in addition to security. Maybe you want to move closer to family, you know, your grandkids or something like that. So those are all things that you have to do. Maybe do a checklist and see what's important to you before you make that determination to even call a realtor is that you got to have that ready, be ready to go and say, I want to go. I want to move somewhere. I want to downsize. I've made that decision. Then, like Andrea said, get a realtor in there and uh, and help you decide what stays, what doesn't stay, and and help you with the process of uh, finding a new home or or a new condo over at Shepherd of the Valley or somewhere else, uh, and uh, and then getting your house sold um, after you've moved out. I think that's uh, I think that's great advice and some of the things you really need to think about whether you're looking to downsize or just sell in general you really have to think things through and be ready to call you know when you know not when you're him hawing around and you know you're not sure but um, I think that you know we we obviously have a great relationship with your teams um, and if people are looking for a realtor of course we would recommend that you reach out to Stephen Andrea um, and if if we're looking uh, and I'm in Trumbull County then Steve how am I going to reach you what's the best way for me to reach you? So we're located in uh, Halland, Ohio, off of 46, right across from the Eastwood Mall. Our phone number is 330-856-6100. And we're right up across from Chick-fil-A. So I know everybody goes to Chick-fil-A. So on your way to get a sandwich, just, just make a hard right and you'll be right in our parking lot. Perfect. And Andrea, if I'm in Mahoning County looking to sell my house or buy a house, uh, how would I get in touch with you and your team? Well, I would just give us a call at 330-629-8300. And we are located conveniently right across from the new, whoops, right across from the new Myers grocery store. So everybody knows where Myers is right now. You both have very good landmarks to reference That's your right. office. I love yes. that. When we talk about where our corporate office is at Shepherd, we always say we're across from the casino. So see, I, I relate to the good landmark. Sure. So that's perfect. Um, and we'll, we will revisit your phone numbers later on in the show. But um, just in case a viewer is watching and is, is ready to pull the trigger, we want to make sure you guys have the information in order to reach out to these guys. Um, so we've talked significantly about our, our sellers. Let's talk a little bit about buyers. So um, either I've sold my home or I'm looking to buy a home for the first time, or maybe I've relocated to be closer to my kids because I've downsized. Um, what are some of the advantages, if any, for our buyers right now in the market? Wow, there's a lot of advantages for buyers right now. I mean, look at the interest rate for one, right? Where have we been in history this low? You know, I look at it, I remember when when I was able to buy a new car at, at, at a 3% interest rate, I was so excited, but I was so nervous about signing that contract and making that payment. And I was like, and my son's like, who's an accounting major, he's like, mom, just think of it, inflation, right? In, in a couple of years, 3%, like 0% interest. So, you know, if you look at it like that, I mean, right now we're, we're down there. Um, you know, even if we hit, three, five, six, eight. Those are all great percentages when you're looking at buying a home. But I mean, there is prediction out there in the market right now in the next six months, they are going to be creeping up a little bit. And we have seen that uh, just a little bit. So anytime you have the interest rate starting to creep up a little bit, buyers that are looking get a little bit more nervous because it's like, you know, for every little bit that that interest rate goes up, it could put them out of that cost of the home that they were pre-qualified for ahead of time. You know, that being said, getting that, that pre-qualification is so important because you are up against uh, cash offers, you're up against uh, people with great big down payments, and, you know, if you do have a good down payment or conventional loan, uh, those are great. The sellers are really liking those right now. 
But at the same time, if your house is in really good condition, the product that you're buying is in good condition, there's no peeling paint, then you could do an FHA or VA loan. But if there is peeling paint on a house, that, you know, that is one thing that I would tell our listeners today to do. Get out there and chip that paint away and, and put a new coat on there because that is, that is one of the biggest struggles that we see uh, on the appraisal part of properties. Yeah, and that'll hold up a closing too. So as Andrea said, you know, I think we talked like two years ago, rates were probably around 6%. So, I mean, we're half that way now. So that's one, like Andrea said, a benefit to, uh, to buyers everywhere. And as she said too, I think uh, sellers out there are making sure that their homes are as close to move in ready as possible. So they know that they're getting these big offers and they want it justified. So when the appraisals come, and there's least amount of, of uh, issues with the home, you know, when, when appraiser does or home inspections and stuff like sure. that. So um, uh, sellers are doing a really great job of preparing their homes for sale more than they did in the past. Good. You know, I keep, I do keep hearing these stories <clears throat> from people that are purchasing houses or selling houses where, you know, they get this amazing offer that's above asking price. And then the bank comes in and does the appraisal. And then things kind of start to unravel a little bit if, you know, so um, I think these are all good reminders for all of us. Is there anything else that from a buyer perspective might be important for them to keep in mind right now? I would say, I would say this, they may only get one chance at that house. So, and like I said, I mean, nobody's going to tell them or make them. They're always going to have the, they're always going to be the decision maker. But when you have six or seven buyers on a house, somebody's going to go way over because they've probably missed out on four or five other houses already. Right. And they're just tired of making offers. And their agent has probably said, listen, just make an offer and we'll worry about the appraisal later. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can't coming in under, under asking price now or something like that. And uh, it's just, it's, it's, you, you've got no, you've got no stake in the game. You've got probably no chance of winning that, that bid. So uh, make your best offer sometimes. Um, there's escalation clauses out there that can be used. Get an agent that understands that. Uh, that means you're going to go up so much above the other offers. So uh, get an agent that understands that process. Um, and, uh, and just give your best shot. I mean, don't, don't, play, don't play around and, and say, you know, if you really love the house, always give your best shot. Yes. Hey, D Danielle, I would also say this, that when you're looking at properties right now uh, and say your maximum amount that you want to spend is, is 150,000, then don't look at a $150,000 house because the problem is, is that people are paying over asking price for everything. So bring your price down a little bit, maybe to have your cap be $130,000 houses that you're looking at uh, in that range. So that when you go to make your offer, you could make that stronger offer. You could go over asking price. And truthfully, right now in the market that we're in today, the asking price that's on a house is the starting price. Not it used to be like, oh, how much you think? You know, ten thousand under twenty thousand. Now I do have to say there are some homes that are significantly overpriced on the market, and that's why it's important to have a good realtor represent you because they will do a market analysis of that area, show you like in the last six months to a year, what properties have sold for in that area on that street. And this is the same thing appraisers do, uh, is they just go out, take a look at what things are selling for around there to justify the price. Now they're a little bit more strict because they're gonna compare ranches with ranches, two stories with two stories, but really the public is what sets the market value of properties. And so whatever the public is willing to pay is what that market value is. So you may be sitting on a gold mine right now and not even realize it. And maybe you're thinking, well, how do I even know how much my house is worth? And I would say, listen, every single day, our agents are out there doing free evaluations of homes. This is wow. no obligation. You don't have to pay for this. This is a free service that we do. And it helps you to starting, start establishing a relationship with an agent that could provide you with valuable information 
if you ever did decide to sell. So when you receive letters in the mail, which probably most of you have saying, hey, I have a buyer looking for a house in your neighborhood. You know what? They probably do because we all have buyers looking for houses in neighborhoods. So uh, I'd say if you're on the fence, get off the fence and give us a call because we would love to help you get that house listed for sale. Well, and it's good to know that those letters are legitimate because sometimes when I get them, I kind of giggle and I'm like, no one wants to buy my house. Why, why am I getting this letter? Um, so, you know, if, if only it's, if it's signed Steve, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, unless it's one of my friends. Um, but it's funny cause we, we, yeah, we do get those letters, but <clears throat> it's so funny. Something that you said, Andrea really resonated with me. Um, you know, I, I know there's so many people out there that are trying to sell their homes on their own. You know, they're doing a sale by owner. And if you are a very skilled person, perhaps an attorney, then maybe you do have some of the knowledge behind you to, to get through this and be able to do that. <clears throat> but, um, you know, when you set your own price and you put it out there on one of the many websites that are available or put your sign in the yard, you don't have that expertise of a realtor next to you helping you price it appropriately, you know, not just overpricing, but also underpricing. You want to make sure you get what's fair for your home and you don't have someone to kind of explain those clauses to you, Steve, the escalation clause and make sure that, you know, you're doing what you, you need to do to protect yourself and all these all these things that a realtor brings to the table um you know sometimes when when people have asked questions about realtors and they want to talk about commission and you know i think you guys more than earn that very small percentage um, that you're charging just by keeping your buyer and your seller safe and making sure that all the things they need to keep in mind are being kept in mind, that they're pricing fairly. You know, you, you know this much better than me. I wouldn't go into my house and try to do my own plumbing. And I'm certainly not going to go into my house and try to try to sell it on my own. So sometimes it's not worth those few dollars that you might save by not paying the commission. So I would encourage our uh, viewers that are thinking about selling or buying to do so uh, with a trusted realtor by their side, because it really makes the process much easier. And nine times out of 10, when you buy or sell a home, something unexpected comes up. Am I wrong? <laughs> always. <laughs> There's always, always something that's going to happen always. that you're not expecting. Um, yeah. So it's always good to have somebody by your side that can kind of help you with that. Um, that being said, I want to let our viewers know that there has been a change uh, with our friends over at Berkshire. You guys have expanded your footprint. Do you want to tell us about that at all? We've got a couple minutes left. Yeah, so uh, so uh, we were Berkshire Hathaway Northwood uh, for many years. Um, now we're, we bought uh, seven or eight Stauffer Realty offices between Akron and Cleveland. And because of their brand in that area and us wanting to expand our footprint even farther, uh, we took on the name of Stauffer Realty. So same people, same agents, same management. Uh, we're Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Stauffer Realty now. Same great uh, agents, same great marketing and, uh, and, and values. So uh, we're very proud to be that name. And uh, nothing's changed except a couple of stickers on signs. And, uh, and uh, we're in the same places, same buildings, and same great, uh, same great service that we can give each and every uh, person out there. And, and I would just add, because we get this question all the time, uh, have you ever met Warren Buffett? And, <laughs> and, and no, no, we haven't met Warren Buffett, uh, but he is the greatest investor that there is. Uh, and so having his name associated with your franchise is definitely a big benefit uh, for us. So uh, we really uh, appreciate that. And, and so, yeah, none of us, none of us have met Warren Buffett, just no. to clear that up. Not, Maybe not one yet. day. Not yet. Maybe one day. When he, but, you when know, he sees being, this. Being a part of that large of a franchise is great because, you know, if we have viewers that are looking for their second uh, home and they want a vacation home, they can still call you guys and they can connect Absolutely. you uh, with realtors all over the country. So we are very blessed to have you guys here locally as experts to help us sell and buy whatever uh, or wherever it is that we're looking to be. Um, thanks for coming back to the show and, and joining us and talking a little bit about what to expect right now. Um, we appreciate uh, all of the guidance. And again, if you guys would like to talk with either Steve or Andrea in order to find out more about what your home is worth or where you can look to buy, please feel free to reach out to them. I know you guys are on Facebook Facebook. I know you've got a website. We've talked about the phone numbers. There's lots of ways you can find out what the team at Berkshire is up to. So once again, I just want to thank you both and we'll see you guys next time. 
Thanks, Danielle. Always a pleasure. Oh, thanks, yeah. Steve. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you.